Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to another live vidIQ training session. My name is Liron Segev. I'm going to be taking you through this training. Um, we're supposed to only start in about 10 minutes or so, but I always like to come on a little bit early and chat with you guys, see how things are going, see what's going on. I saw JYPD Gaming is already here, got his homemade ice blend coffee, which is awesome. That really sounds good. I'm definitely, I'll be joining you, but I've got my regular coffee this time. So uh, for those who are new, who haven't been here before, the way that this stream is divided, it's divided into two sections. Now, the, we don't do any channel reviews. So if anyone wants to hear to do channel reviews, sorry, today is not the day. Tuesday is when we do channel reviews with Rob and Dan and Travis, um, a really good team. They do this on a Tuesday. I have been kicked out of that group. I now do the Wednesday stream. And today's stream is essentially... Who's got Diet Coke? Star gozi has got Diet Coke. Well, that's going to get you through this as well. So don't worry, you're good. So um, by the way, if you're new here and you haven't been to this stream before, drop a hashtag new into the chat. Let's just see who's new and who's old and who's been here before, who hasn't been here before. So it always kind of like to kind of get an idea. Heather Aaron says, hi, I am new. Sol Lander says, hello. Um, Pegoni Channel says um, they're new. Levine um, Varugashi says they're new. Division Wilson says they're new. It's Tresha says they're old. Um, Palmer Carlson's Clarkson. Clarkson. Okay, guys, I, I, I am going to butcher your name. Uh, it's just going to happen. Between me and Dan, I'm not sure who butchers more names. I think I'm definitely in the running for, for, for doing that. Hey, Cart Galaxy is here. How are you doing? Thank you for being here. Old. Yeah, yeah. You've been in every one of the streams. No wonder your channel is doing so well. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. So I see a lot of new, new people here. So let <laughs> new-ish. Who's new-ish? <laughs> Jamie B. <laughs> new-ish. I love it. Okay. So the way that this is kind of dividing, it, the way that this stream works, it's divided into two sections. The first section is a pre-recorded section. Yes, I know it's a live stream and I know that section is pre-recorded, but the way uh, real life unboxing, <laughs> Team Dan for butchering names. Oh, I want that on the shirt. That's going to be brilliant. Uh, yeah, so the, way, the reason I pre-record that first session is because it's absolutely everything you need to know in order to grow your YouTube channel. Now, it's the A to Z or A to Z, depending on kind of which country you're from. I teach this to small creators, people that I work with on a daily basis, 100, 200 subscribers. And guess what? The exact same strategy I use with people who have got millions of subscribers. I, same strategy applies. It's all about unlock moments. It's understanding how YouTube works. And it's about how catering your YouTube channel to work within the way that YouTube works. That is how you grow your channel. There are no hacks. There are no shortcuts. There are no sub for sub. By the way, if you do any of that nonsense, our mods are basically going to time you out and get rid of you. We don't do sub for sub. Any of that nonsense systems like sub for subs, buying bots and views and all that nonsense just destroys your channel. So whilst we're on that topic of sub for sub, think about this way, right? You do a sub for sub situation. You get now 100 new subscribers. Those subscribers are not watching your videos. You launch a new video and what happens? YouTube says, hey, your own subscribers are not even watching your videos. Why would YouTube promote your videos if your own subscribers aren't watching? Please do not do sub for sub. It is a terrible, terrible practice. I don't know when that started, but it really, really is so bad for your channel. Don't do it. The f besides the fact that it's kind of against YouTube terms of service, practically, it doesn't make any sense. YouTube says, hey, awesome channel. A thousand subscribers, but each video has got three views. It's not going to promote you. Stop doing that. So, um, right, so I got uh, I got off track here. This is why I like to come on early to set the scene here and to get some more coffee, which is frankly quite important at this stage. So, it's the A to Z. It's the A to Z guide of exactly what you need to do, and we're going to go super practical. We have lots of theory. Go check out our YouTube channel. Go check out our blog. Um, we've got lots of that stuff. But today it's practical. How do I do the three Ds of YouTube? If you know what those three Ds are, you're going to be successful on YouTube. You just got to play by certain rules. And I'm going to show all this to you. Free of charge. You guys get it. And because you're here, by the way, if you want vidIQ, if you don't have vidIQ with us, if you want vidIQ for free, 
There is a link in the description. So I'm gonna point down frantically down to the bottom. There's a link in the description. It's gonna give you vidIQ for free for 30 days. Unlock all the vidIQ goodness, access to our academy, access to our reward system. We've got lots of good deals going on there. So you get all that for absolute free just because you happen to be here. I think it's also pinned up in the comments here as well. So go and grab yourself vidIQ and use it. After 30 days, if you're saying, look, my channel, I still doesn't have enough data, downgrade to the free version, no problem. Because as soon as you see those data points coming in and it's gonna save you all that, the headache, the trouble, the whole idea of what do I do next? We take all that away from you and we help you what to do next. That is the beauty of what we do here. So go and grab that and, and hang out with us. By the way, if you wanna have these kind of chats and you don't wanna wait for a Wednesday stream, no problem go and join our Discord server. Again, link is in the description. We have a Facebook group if Discord is not your thing. Again, link is in the description. Oh, tomorrow. All right, listen to this. I have got a podcast coming out tomorrow. It's called Tube Talk is the name of the podcast. Go to vidiq.com slash tube talk or just find Tube Talk in your favorite podcast application, Apple, Google, Spotify, etc. Tomorrow's episode, guys, this person went from zero subscribers to making over a hundred thousand dollars in 2020 seriously this year you know this weird year that we're having this person killed it crushed it rocked it whatever your famous terminology is uh, they absolutely did superbly well and i go deep into that topic of how did she do it what were the strategy that she used so definitely you want to listen to that especially if you're still kind of struggling to find your niche or your feet or how does this work Tomorrow's episode is going to blow your mind. Absolutely go and do it. Hey, Edson Carl, thank you for hitting that subscribe button. Okay, sorry, I was distracted. So again, this session is divided into two sections. The first section is pre-recorded, okay? That's the one, the bit that's going to come up. It's going to be the A to Z guide of absolutely everything you need to do to rock your channel. Now, then I come back on to section number two. That's when you and I have a chat. It's Q&A. You guys ask me a question. I'll answer the question. As long as I've got internet connectivity, and as long as I've got coffee, I'm, and my voice is still going, I'm happy to stay on as chat for as long as we need to. Um, I will say internet connectivity is a bit weird at the moment. Where I am, there are tornadoes, there's, there's a big storm, so fingers crossed everything goes well. All right, but again, first section is pre-recorded. I know someone in the chat is gonna say, is this pre-recorded, this isn't live. I know, that's why we do it. We, I pre-record that section mainly because a lot of people, number one, come back to the stream later on because this will be available on the replay when we're done. People come back and they watch certain sections. And then the second reason I pre-record it, because when you're in learning mode, you just want, don't want me to be interrupted by me saying, hey, Backyard, thank you for hanging out here. Hey, um, GD, Giraffe, VidIQ helps a lot. Awesome. Thank you for hanging out here again. Okay. You don't want that interruption because you're in that learning mode. And I am going to take you through every step you need in order to get views, get subscribers. Uh, I'm assuming that's why you're here. If you guys want views and subscribers, give a thumbs up in the chat. Views and subscribers, thumbs up in the chat. By the way, question, 12-minute tech pro, um, podcast. Questions will come up in the Q&A section. So that's, save that questions for later. I'm going to have a sip of coffee whilst to see if anyone actually really wants views and subscribers. Oh, some people are. The normal PS4 gamers, I put a thumbs up. <laughs> Love it. Okay, um, Backyard Q, thumbs up. LA, thumbs up. Two Quacks, Five Clucks Farms. Oh, brilliant channel name. Thumbs up. Jamie B, thumbs up. Gig Tech, lots of thumbs up. Bob's Diecast, lots and lots and lots of thumbs up. Fist bump from its thrasher. Uh, back to you. Doom. All right. Um, oh, look, I mean, guys, everybody's here. Oh, Daniel's here. Daniel, thank you for holding down the fort. Daniel's awesome. If you've got questions, Daniel is obviously going to be able to help you. Got lots of links and you can just share stuff. Um, yeah, definitely go chat with Daniel and come and hang out with us on Discord. Lots of cool stuff happening across all the time. What is up, bro? Hello, Extra Mile. Vicky Silver, lots of thumbs up. Luca Beats, lots of thumbs up. Oh, don't you just love this community? That's just the best. Guys, no spam, please. No, none of this copy and paste nonsense. Um, none of this bullying each other nonsense. We don't take it on the stream. This is a nice, friendly environment. We're all in this together. We all want to grow our channels to that next level. If you've got five subscribers, you want to get to 10. If you've got 100, you want to get to 500. If you've got 1,000, you want 5,000. And guess what? If you've got 100,000, you want 200,000. 
We all want that next level. We're all in here to help each other out the right way. So none of the sub for sub. And seriously, don't be mean to each other. That's just, I hate that. That is uh, not what VidIQ is all about. We're here to help you guys grow. Any negativity like that is out of here. Okay, we got two more minutes to go. Um, Lexi TM Roblox, how you doing? Nice to have you here. Peaceful and um, peaceful music, but spelled nicely. I like the way he's spelling it. Nice to have you here. Luca Beats, thank you for hanging out here. Okay. Oh, all right. Things are going to get hectic. Things are going to come at you fast and furious. I help you have your favorite beverage, a pen, paper, notepad, Evernote, Google Docs, whatever you take notes in, lots of stuff is coming at you. By the time that you finish the stream, your mind's going to be like, oh, what just happened? And then come back to this later on and start going through each and every section. If you want views, and you want subscribers, you're in the right place. If you want to spam and sub for subs, you're in the wrong space. I'm sure there's a cat video out there more to your liking. So you can kind of leave immediately. Um, we don't do reviews today. That's on a Tuesday. Again, for those who are just joining now, um, first section is pre-recorded. A to Z guide of how to rock your channel. Understanding the three Ds of YouTube. Doing it the right way. And by the way, if you were here last week or the week before, yes, it is the same training simply because uh, YouTube hasn't changed and because new people are joining VidIQ all the time, which is absolutely awesome. And because people we know, they tell us, people who have been through these streams, first week, too much information, mind overwhelmed. Second week, they listen, go, oh, I can do that. And then they do that one bit. And then the following week, they do another one bit. And the following week, they do another one bit. That's how you steer your ship the right way, by making little baby steps, little corrections, and boom, your channel just blows up. That is why we do this. That is why it's free. We just want to help you guys um, hang out here. Who's from South Africa? Hello, how's it? How's it going? Cyborg. All right. Um, oh, I saw it, but, I saw it, but the name is gone. Dah, dang. I always like to say hello to my fellow South Africans. Um, okay, right. Let's get going. All right, it's 12 o'clock. I'm not sure how that happened. Top of the hour. We're ready to rock and roll. Let's do this. So, guys ready? Lots of information. Fast and furious. First stage, pre-recorded. Someone will say in the chat, this is pre-recorded. Yes, it is. And then I come back on and we do Q&A. We're going to have fun. We're going to discuss YouTube. We're going to answer all your questions. It's going to be an awesome stream. Let's do this. Let's rock and roll. Hey, Mitch, Mich um, Michael, Michelle, Michael. Oh. All right. Sorry. I, I just knew I'm going to butcher names. Anyway, on that lovely note, let's get going. So if you're ready in five, four, three, forget it. Let's go. VidIQ. VidIQ. VidIQ.com. Hello, everybody. Welcome and thank you for joining us for another VidIQ training session. My name is Liron Segev. I am the Director of Customer Success here at VidIQ which means that every day I work with creators big and small, helping them level up their channels, get more subscribers, more views in less time. And that's exactly what I'm going to do with you today. Now, today is not about theory. It's not about making good thumbnails because we know all of that. And if you missed out on any of that information on the VidIQ channel, which you've just subscribed to, if you haven't already, we have so much value, so many videos about those particular topics. You can go and consume them at your own time. But today it's not about that. Today, it's about the practical steps. You know, the thing at vidIQ is a lot of us have our own channels. We're all creators. And therefore, we understand the frustrations that you go through as a creator. We've all been there. We all know the frustration of filming a video, spending time editing it, uploading it, and then uh, nothing happens or a handful of views. Ridiculously frustrating and almost like demoralizing. Do I really want to do this YouTube thing? So that is what today's training is all about, the practical steps. Now, if you don't have vidIQ, that's perfectly fine. You can still hang out with us, no problem. If you are here as a way of saying thank you, in the description below, there's a link to the vidIQ tools. Go and download them. And then for the next 30 days, it will just unlock all the beautiful goodness that's in your channel. And believe it or not, there is goodness. And I'm going to show you how to tap into that. And that's what these tools are about. They're about 
unlocking that frustration, unlocking the goodness that you have, unlocking the way forward. How do you build your channel? How do you grow? How do you get your audience? And this is what I'm going to show you today. So YouTube is made up of three D's. And when you can unlock all three of those, that is when magic happens. That is when your channel really blows up. It happened to me. I can tell you from firsthand experience on my channel. So this is critical, critical stuff. And that's why I want to share this with you. Very excited to do this. So the first D is all about discovery. If YouTube doesn't know about your latest creation, it could be absolutely mind blowingly amazing. Well, it's not going to discover it. And therefore, it's, people are not going to know about it. Therefore, people are not going to find it. And therefore, it's going to remain with very, very little views. And again, we're going to go deep into all of this. So the first D is about discovery. The second D is about delivery. Are you as a content creator delivering value to your audience? YouTube looks at that. So what I mean by that is, are you using clickbait to get people just to click and then they don't like it and they leave? Are people loving your content so they're watching so much more of us and they're commenting and giving you those thumbs up? That's important. And that's the second D. It's about delivering. And then finally, the third D is about distribution. When you get those first two right, YouTube looks at those signals and says, okay, got a video here. It's being loved by its own audience. Let me go and distribute this to a bigger audience. Let me go find a new audience for this video. Oh, and when that happens, that is when you get those fresh new eyes on those videos. And that is when your subscribers grow. And that is when your views grow. Okay, so where do all good YouTube videos begin? They begin in the kitchen. Of course, that's where all good YouTube videos begin, right? If I tell you right now, stop what you're doing, go to your kitchen, go to open up some random cupboards, take up some random ingredients, mix them all together, and then stick it in your oven, what are the odds that a beautiful pizza is going to come out of that? Mm, probably not much, right? But if I tell you, hold on, don't grab random ingredients. I need you to grab the following. There's some tomato sauce. There is some flour. There is some eggs. There is cheese. There is olives. There is whatever. And I give you the steps and I tell you, this is, these are the steps to get the dough going. And then you get the sauce and then you get the cheese on top and then stick it in the oven for this temperature, for this long. Then what are the odds of a beautiful pizza coming out? Beautiful and amazing. The way we all approach our videos is the first bit. We take our camera, we run out, we shoot hours and hours of video, we come home, we drop it onto our computers, we edit it, we copy and move scenes around, we add B-roll, it looks amazing, we slap a title, slap a thumbnail, upload it, and then uh, hope that something comes out of that. Hope that a beautiful pizza comes out of that and people love it. Uh, that's not going to work, is it? But so that's why I want to focus today on the exact steps that you need to take to follow the recipe. Follow the YouTube recipe. Like we did with our pizza, I want to do, give you the exact those steps that you need to do for your next video. Okay, so it's going to get good. There's lots of information. It's going to come at you fast and furious. Again, if you don't have VidIQ, it's in the description below. Grab it before we get going. This will be available on the replay. So in case you missed anything or I speak too fast or you need more information, no problem. Don't worry, after the session is done, you can come back to this. Okay, so now that we have pizza in mind, and a lot of us are going to get hungry round about now, well, that's good motivation to come go through this training with me. So you ready for this? Let's start off with making a video pizza. We're going to make a video about pizza. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my search bar. This is where I start. I start by putting in my word or my phrase, and the first thing I want to understand is the landscape. Now remember, we're using pizza here. Of course, this will work for absolutely anything else. I just want to show you an example. We all understand because, well, you get this basically around the world. So let's have a look at this. So pizza is my key phrase. I'm going to make a video about pizza. I'm not really sure what yet, but I know that that's what I want to focus on. So vidIQ reveals a whole bunch of information. Highest view video, 28 million. Okay, that looks good. Top creator is a channel called Tasty. Okay, interesting. But look at this, volume. The volume here is 82. It's in the green. What does that mean? It means there's lots of people who are actually searching for our particular key phrase, our pizza key phrase. Do you go out and make a video immediately? No, because you got to look at competition and you can see the competition is very high. What does that mean? Lots of people are searching for pizza related content, 
but there's also lots of channels, lots of videos delivering. So therefore, it's going to be very, very difficult to make a video just about pizza. So do we just give up? No. Here is where this tip comes into play. Now, this is important. This actually will change your research. We're going to do this. We're going to go out here to our search bar. And what we're going to do is the alphabet walkthrough. So pizza space A, B, C, D. What is it showing you? It's showing me autocomplete. In other words, so many people have searched for the word pizza and dough recipe that YouTube makes it a little bit easier for the next person to start typing pizza space D. We assume they're going to go for this dough recipe. Oh, look, there it is. Dough without yeast. Pizza dough recipe without yeast. How does this help us? How does this help us as content creators? Well, this is a good indication of what people are searching for. If people are searching for pizza dough recipe without yeast, that gives us a beautiful direction for our video. We're going to make a video about pizza dough, and we're going to use the word dough, recipe, and yeast, because those seem to be the popular words. Remember, we're only on the D. E, F, G. Look how many titles come up here that you can actually use for your video. This is where you start really understanding YouTube search. So remember, YouTube is a search engine. What do you do in search engines? You ask questions. So don't forget, don't just do the A, B, C, D walkthrough. Go to the beginning of the phrase and then type in the what. What pizza looks like around the world? What's pizza to your body? What pizza is the best? What? Where? When? Why? How? Okay. And all of a sudden, look at this. How Pizza Hut makes pizza. How pizza rolls are made. How pizza is made in Domino's. What does this show you? It's telling you what people are currently searching for. Go and make your videos based on these. That's how you get those initial eyeballs, those initial reactions, because you're answering somebody's question. Autocomplete is a beautiful way to understand the YouTube algorithm and what people are currently searching for. If you can marry up a video title to a query, that is where you win. Remember, we're still in research mode, okay? So let's have a look at this video. This video, it says, the best homemade pizza you'll ever eat. Views, 19 million views on this. So by most indication, 19 million views is a good views for your video. I mean, we all would love 19 million views on our videos. But does that mean that this channel is winning? In other words, is this a good video for this channel? Because remember, this channel has got 18 million subscribers. So is 19 million views like uh, a regular video for them? Or is it a real video for them? Well, let's find out. So 19 million views. Here is what the problem with views is. Views doesn't take time into account. In other words, this video was launched in 2018. Did it get a, all of its views right at the beginning, or did it take years to get to these numbers? Did it take a day, a month, a week, a year, three years? How many years did it take to get to this 19 million? Why is that important? Because it tells me about relevancy. Is this video relevant today? So, for example, the iPhone 1 or the Samsung Note 1 phone that came out. Now, I'm a tech geek, so I'm going to use technology examples. But let's just say that video came out of the iPhone 1. When it came out, millions of views on those videos. But is it still relevant today? That's the question. How many people are still searching today? If all you saw was that this video has got 19 million views and you went ahead and made a video all around this topic... Well, you're going to be missing the boat here because this might not be relevant today. So what do we do? We'll show you something called VPH, views per hour. And essentially what views per hour is, it's telling me right now how many people are watching this video. So as you can clearly see, there is still lots and lots and lots of interest in this particular video, in this particular title. And in fact, if you look at historical trends, you can see it was doing okay, 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 and all of a sudden, boom, a big, big surge. It's obviously the times that we're in, people are interested in making homemade pizza, and therefore this video is getting all that beautiful momentum. So remember, evergreen content, this is another example of something that was live in 2018. 
and look it just picked was okay okay and now just picked up traction so very important to remember the evergreen content so when you launch a video don't panic straight away if it doesn't get those beautiful views you just never know when your time will come this is two years later and look at those numbers beautiful just popping so again a total number of views doesn't indicate if it's a good video today so we show you views per hour very very important the next thing we look at is did they use any reddit so there's a couple of reddit instructions a little bit of facebook going on here but look at this this is beautiful this tells me that remember i asked you earlier 19 million views on a channel with 18 million subscribers is this okay or not is this a great video or a bad video well we'll tell you that the compare views in the first 28 hour days tools is exactly the tool that you need because if you have a look at this you say this video i want to compare it to this channel's average this channel's average is a little pink at the bottom this video is the one in blue after one day two days three days seven days so now we can see after seven days this channel typically gets 122,000 to 194,000 views on a video but this video got a 2.6 million views in the first seven days what does this tell me it's tell me this is an outlier video this is an exceptional exceptional video and therefore i am absolutely going to research this video the title the thumbnail the description the tags that they used look what it's ranking for i want to understand all of this so that i can make my video as close to this as possible if youtube is currently suggesting this video and it's an outlier video for this channel well i am one to be able to get in on that now this video tells you more this sorry this tool tells you more not just this channel's average you can actually look at your channel's average so this video compared to your own channel's average this video compared to the last video you watched any video any playlist any channel and then the competitors average and i'll show you that shortly as well so very 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 powerful tool it tells you exactly what you need to know this is a good video lots of views per hour trending topic still relevant today i am absolutely going to investigate this if i was making a pizza video remember we're still in research mode we're still in the first d that first d of being discovered so we may have some title ideas what about thumbnails what should we be going after well in research mode we still want to be discovered we go to the vidIQ tools on the left hand side and there's something called competitors click on that and this essentially loads up all the people who are doing similar stuff to you in your industry this for us this is the people that we work with people that we attend events with other youtube teachers here and we want to understand what's going on now why is it important because youtube knows that we don't watch one video about one item and then go make a buying decision we watch multiple videos about the same item therefore what we want to understand is what's going on in the industry what are our competitors doing remember this is sorted by views per hour so i can see which topic is getting more attention i want to see what their thumbnails are like are they still good lots of text still faces um what's their titles are they long titles are they short titles this all this gives me good indication am i still on the right track now remember in your industry it's going to be different people you have to load up yourselves the people that you look up to your people you want to work with and when you see it you start getting a good picture and a good idea now I'll tell you what else it does youtube is all about trends youtube knows that when a trend comes out it becomes a hot topic people are talking about it people are researching it and therefore it's going to serve more and more content so imagine in this industry if we saw that everybody's talking about a specific topic a specific youtube tool maybe something new has come out and our competitors have started talking about that well of course we're going to understand that and we want to get in on that action as well in your industry is going to be exactly the same maybe everybody is starting to talk about the upcoming big vacation or the upcoming big holiday in your country maybe it's mother's day whatever it may be if people are starting to talk about it means the industry is starting to talk about that particular holiday in other words search results are coming in in other words you can start jumping on this so it's a good way to keep an eye on your competitors keep an eye on what they're doing what are they saying what are they what do they look like and is there anything that you need to change don't go and copy them because obviously that's not a good strategy but go and understand what's going on know your competitive landscape very very important 
So that is competitors. Go and load up a whole bunch and the value here is insane, especially when it comes to trend. Because trend is where it's at, the next tool I'm going to show you is called the trend alerts. Now, trend alerts, this is very important. Um, trend alerts changes your channel. Here is why. Let's just, you give it a, a, an alert name and then you say, here's my keyword. So basically what I'm saying to vidIQ is anytime somebody makes a video with this keyword in from any of these competitors or from the whole of YouTube, when that video gets more than, let's just say a thousand views per hour, remember per hour, not in total. When that video gets more than a thousand views per hour, each week, send me a report that looks like this. Now, why is this important and how does this change channels? Well, what will land up happening is you'll see that a certain style of video has gone from 1,000 views per hour to 5,000 views per hour to 10,000 views per hour. Okay, something is happening. Something's happening over there. I need to understand that because it's going to be your keyword. So it's going to be related to your industry. You know what those big keywords are. And as soon as you see them, you know that you want to jump in on that action and get in on the trend really, really, really early on. So many channels have changed completely because they realize that a certain keyword has become hot, is just starting to roll. They've seen channels go from 500 views per hour on a video to 1,000 views per hour on a video to 5,000 views per hour on a video. Well, it means there's a big hunger for that keyword. Could I make a video with that keyword? Could I make on that topic? And if you can, you can jump in on those trends really, really, really early on. Remember, we're still in the D for discovery. We've done our research. We've done the what, where, when, how. We've done the alphabet walkthrough with our keywords. We have seen which are cool videos. We've marked them so we know to go back to them and research them. We've seen what our competitors are doing, our trend alert sets. The next thing is most viewed. And essentially what most viewed is, is everything that's going on that's happening on YouTube right now. Now, before you tell me, yes, there is the trending page, we're very well aware of it, but this is different. Do you know why? Because this sorts out the hot videos on YouTube sorted by views per hour. This video is getting 300,000 views per hour. This video is 146,000 views per hour. So why is this important? Well, First of all, you're in the YouTube game. You need to know what's working on YouTube as a whole, even when it's out of your niche. And here you can see that certain topics are working really, really well. What's the thumbnail like? How clean is it? How much text is there? What is their titles? Is it long? Is it short? All these questions you need to be asking all the time so you can understand how clean these are. Look at this. Just something I can pick up immediately. There's no text. Look at that. Very little text, if any big bright colors and these are kids content and they're still doing well on YouTube. Again, even this, Child Wild, Chad Wild Clay, great channel, no text. Uh, Marque is Brownlee to do with technology. The only text here is the $3.99 the price. You're learning all the time from what's going on. Now you can take it a step further. What you can say is, look, um, love this guy, but he's got a channel with what millions and millions of subscribers. It's nowhere near where I am. No problem. You go down here to channel subs and you can change it. You can say, show me only channels that are in the bronze, 10 to 100,000 subs, or 100,000 to a million subs, something closer to your world, so that you can learn what's working in that industry, in that subscriber range, and make videos accordingly. You can also you can do search re research here with search terms, the various categories, the various countries, and all of this helps you with being discovered, and that's the most important thing, doing that research before you touch that camera, before you rush out and spend hours of your life making a video that is not going to get those views. Spend the time rather doing this here. Okay, so we've seen the videos. We've looked at our competitors. We have done our research. We've looked at what's trending. We've looked at what's working on the whole of YouTube. We looked at it in our research mode. We now armed. We go and create our video. Okay, now that we've got our video, what do we do next? Okay, so you've done your video, you've uploaded it, and now it's time to feed it all that beautiful, juicy information in your titles, your descriptions, your tags, and your thumbnail. So let's look at these tools. The most important thing for me when it comes to YouTube is the thumbnail and the title in combination. 
not in isolation, but together. Why? Well, here's what happens. When somebody is doing a search on YouTube, they perhaps will scroll down and your thumbnail has one mission to get them to stop and go, oh, what's that? And then they glance over and they look at your title and together they're either going to decide to click or not to click. A great thumbnail with a rubbish title is not enticing enough and vice versa. An amazing title, but with a thumbnail that doesn't get somebody's attention, also not good enough. They're not going to stop and click, but it's got to work together. So this is one of the greatest tools. I love this completely. It's called Preview in Search Results. This is brand new, and this is ah, this will be a game changer as well. So what do we do? We want to understand how will my video look like when other people are doing a search. So let's just say the question is how to get a thousand subscribers. So let's write that in. How to get a thousand subscribers. And I'm going to say preview and search. Now look what's going to happen. We're going to come up here. This is the video. And this shows me the videos, other videos in this industry. Now we're very lucky because our next video is actually a vidIQ video. So I am asking myself the question, will this thumbnail get people to stop and click compared to the other videos around it. That is beautiful. Also, I get to see everybody else's titles. I can make changes right here. And not only can I make changes to the title, I can click on preview changes. And it would actually change it right here as well. So now I can constantly am optimizing my video to be discovered. So remember I said it's your thumbnail and your title in combination because that's going to get someone to stop what they're doing like this and go, oh, what's this? That is colorful. That's got text, got information. I want to click on that. Now remember, it shows it to me on the search screen. But we all know that home screen is pretty big on YouTube too. That's where a lot of people are finding their information. So now it shows me, look what my icon looks like, my graphics look like on the home screen. Look how it just stands out, all the colors. And that's why people click on this video. And again, I can see this on desktop, I can see this in tablet mode, and I can see it on mobile as well. I want to make sure I'm continuously, continuously optimizing my search results because this is where you win. It's about understanding what your thumbnail and your title look like together compared to the people above you and the people below you. Because as soon as you can get someone's attention with an amazing thumbnail and a great title, this is where you win the click. I love those preview results. Go ahead and use them continuously. You can search for any phrases. We can optimize it here. How to get 100 subs. Let's just say that's the get the results there. Okay, uh, now you can see we're very similar to this. So if I was going after the first 100 subs, I will perhaps not use the same the same thumbnail because it's too similar to this. I would use, oh, <laughs> another VidIQ one. See how different that is? And that's what you want, how to stop somebody's attention to be able to go, wow, what is this click? Now, remember that YouTube knows what your video is about. It has got enough AI systems to understand the content. It's automatically captioning your videos. So it's got all this data. So title and descriptions and your tags simply augment what YouTube already knows. It makes sure that it allocated it correctly. So we always want to write for humans. Don't try keyword stuff this with lots of keywords just to try and get YouTube algorithm to jump around. That used to work back in the day. It does not work anymore because YouTube's smarter than that. So write for people. Write in a way that somebody will want to click. Your description. Put some effort into your description. So give a great opening line because that's the preview line that people will see. And then now timestamps. Make sure you spend time putting in timestamps. YouTube is experimenting with new features. These things like um, chapters. We're going to see more and more of this come into play, especially as we go to more towards voice. So make sure that you put in timestamps into your videos, helping YouTube help you. So when someone on Google does a quick search of how to double down on quality or quantity, well, maybe this is a good enough phrase that YouTube will recommend this video. So you need to spend time and effort in here. So uh, which keywords do you use? Well, this is where tags come in. 
So whilst tags aren't as important as they used to be, you absolutely still need to be using tags. So you start typing here, Mother's, uh, Mother's Day. And here you can already see a whole bunch of Mother's Day related tags that pop in here. So let's select this one, but watch this, okay. Click into here. Now we've got a whole wealth of information. Now what we can see here is Mother's Day gift ideas, but look at this. We also show you the related keywords. We show you the most used keywords, the search volume, the competition, the overall score, and all of these are basically searchable and indexable so that you can go through and say, well, which tags do I wanna use? Mother's Day gift looks like a good one. And simply add, click on the plus button and it will add that tag. All of this information simply helps your video to get better classification. And even though tags by themselves don't matter, when you feed the beast, it helps you with your video. So many people are just ignoring tags altogether. And that is a big, big mistake. It's all about building those relationships between your videos and other videos, other search results and tags help you do that. Okay, so use your tags. Now, the big thing here is when do you make your video public? When do you launch your video? So YouTube looks at various factors. And when it knows about your video, it knows the content, it knows what your title is, it knows what your thumbnail is like, what it doesn't know, if it's a good or a bad video, it has no idea. So it looks for signals. And one of those signals is, do people watch when you make it public? So the best way to know that is to launch your video during a time when people are actually online. So this tool tells you that best time to publish broken down by day. And it knows that if I'm going to launch a video on a Wednesday, my audience happens to be online between these times. So I should probably launch my video just before that so to get all that upwards traffic as people are joining. This is an important signal. If you make your video available, and people are watching it instantly, YouTube says, oh, there must be value here because people are watching and they're watching for more than 50%. So I wanna be able to translate that into maybe trying with another audience. And that's where distribution starts to happen because YouTube is getting all these glorious signals to say that this is a good quality video. And that is how you unlock distribution. So launch your video when your public is online and a good ninja tip here is try not to launch whenever you can schedule a video. What I mean by that is you can schedule a video to launch on the hour or every half an hour or even every 15 minutes. Or so 9, 915, 930, for example. But if you launch your video at 948, it's such a weird time that no other companies schedule their videos to launch at that because you can't. So now you have an opportunity to stand out amongst those notifications. Less notifications, more odds, the odds are much better that your subscriber actually gets the notifications. So just a little bonus tip there. As we scroll further down, a lot of vidIQ um, SEO scores that are right here. We've even got the check the checklist. Let me make sure that I've done everything. Have I got a card? Have I got an end screen? We don't enable monetization, so I'm obviously going to see the X. Have I shared it to on Twitter? Made it public, etc. So we're just keeping you on track, a nice little running track to make sure that you're ticking all the right boxes and ticking all the right marks here. Okay, so we've done our research. We're going to get discovered. We've done the first D. The second D is that we are now launched our video. We've launched it at the right time. And now we hope it's up to YouTube to distribute that video as much as possible. We're obviously going to help it along with social media and our own efforts to get the video seen but we're hoping the YouTube algorithm kicks in. Well, YouTube rewards people that deliver. So it's quality over quantity. How do we know if you're delivering? Well, this is where this tool comes in. It's called the channel audit tool. Now, this is the tool I was missing when I was building up my YouTube channel because I needed something that I can push a button that will tell me what's working and what isn't working. I don't know about you, but I don't want to spend 10 hours of my day trying to decipher little numbers and exporting reports from YouTube Analytics to try to work out what's working and what isn't. I want to push a button, and this is what this does. The channel audit does exactly that. It says, okay, over the last 30 days, is my channel growing or shrinking? So I can see views, subscribers, watch time. If it's going up, great. If it's going down, why? Did maybe I have a viral video last month and I am not don't have one this month? Okay, so I understand. 
So it gives me that information. The next thing I want to look at is content to double down on. And essentially what that means, this is content that you need to make more of. People love this content. It's broken down into views per hour. Which videos are giving me views per hour? How many views per hour does each one of these videos give me? What's the engagement rate? What's the views? Subscribers gained. How many subscribers per 1,000 views? So it gives me an idea of what's bringing in my subscribers to my channel. And now I know that if people are loving this content, uh, make more of this content. Simple as that. And down here, total watch time, average watch time, top retention. These are the stuff that YouTube loves. And YouTube rewards you for it. So if you can mix these together, find the trend on your channel and see what works and make more of that. You'll very quickly discover these certain elements of that your channel that people love and these certain channel stuff that they don't love. So for example, in I how to make the best pizza recipes, maybe you're gonna make five different pizza recipes and every time you use the word pepperoni, it doesn't rank up here. Because you know what? People didn't love that. Where do you see it? In the content that could use work. This is the stuff that didn't really work too well. Well, why not? Lowest average watch time, lowest retention, lowest like ratio, lowest views, videos losing subs. What does that mean? Well, people didn't really engage with our content. Why not? Do we just not make it? No, we go and we understand why that these things not work. What's going on here? Could we do something better to improve it? So things are always going to be up here. So pepperoni lands up down here. Don't make pepperoni recipes. Only make the stuff that works up here. Now another section in the middle is called the top search terms. What are people searching to get to your channel, to get the information? What are the click rates for your end screen? The card click rates. What does this, all this tells you? Well, these are the search terms. So if I make more videos with these search terms, guess what? More views, more subscribers. End screens. You can see how when I'm referring to certain elements in my end screens, they're working better than other end screens. The call to subscribe on our end screen isn't really working. We're not getting much out of this. But best for viewers seems to be doing a lot better. Channel seems to be doing a lot better. On your cards, polls. Look at this. 71% of people are engaging in polls. We're going to make more polls. Playlist is doing okay. Not so bad, but not as good as polls. So we're going to use more polls in our videos. So you see how all this information really helps you understand the second D. Are you delivering? Because when you deliver, that is when distribution happens. And remember, this is for 30 days. We can even drop it down to 60 and 90 days. I always look at this on my personal channel between 30 days, and then I look at it at 90 days. I want to smooth out any highs, smooth out any lows, and just get an idea of what's actually working. So I look at my content to double down on, look for those trends, what are the search terms, and what didn't work so well. Down here, well, I see a little bit of information. I'm using a lot of characters, but look down here. Items to improve upon. Here it says to me, okay, there's videos without cards. Uh-oh. 12 videos don't have an end screen, and six videos are not added to a playlist. I can go into each one of these and instantly fix it straight from here. So it always keeps a good housekeeping in check. Channel order tool is your... The, <laughs> It's almost your savior. It's the best thing that you need for your channel because it's the unemotional version that tells you what's working and what isn't working. So now, we have done the first D. We have been discovered. We have done the second D. We are delivering. We're spending lots and lots of time in our channel order tool to understand what's working and what isn't working. And we're constantly giving our audience the stuff that's working. They're loving it. They're giving us subscribers and they're giving us views. That is what it's all about. And when you do that well enough, once you spend a lot of time doing this, you're going to go into your achievements and you're going to start unlocking achievements. We've unlocked the 500,000 subscriber achievement. And don't worry, this is customized for your channel. So if you haven't hit a certain achievement, don't think you have to wait till 500,000. But now why this is important? Because when you unlock an achievement, it generates a certificate. And this certificate is a great way to help build your audience. Here is why. When you have an achievement and you share it on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, wherever you share it, people are going to say, wow, I'm part of this journey. Your audience is part of that journey. 
they love being part of people's journeys they retweet they like a give, give you a shout out for being successful well done and that grows your community because other people see this and go oh I don't know about this vidIQ channel let me go check it out there must be lots of value this is social proof that everything works and it's come together beautifully for you so spend some time in your achievement understand what you're breaking into you share those certificates be excited about it and then look at your top performing months what are your targets use that as a bit of a motivational thing can I reach my goals how many more days am I away from reaching my next milestones we take care of all that for you so that you're proud to share your successes. And when you do, make sure you tag vidIQ on your social media so we're happy to retweet. We're happy to celebrate in your success and your milestones. Well, I did warn you that this was going to be a lot, right? So it came at you fast and furious. This is every single, 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 what's a single? Every single thing you need to know to grow your YouTube channel. The three Ds of YouTube, how to be discovered, how to handle your deliverability, and then how to deal with distribution. Everything you need to know from going viral to getting more views to getting more subscribers is in here. If you missed any of that, maybe you were too busy chatting, maybe you weren't focused, maybe you were focused on one element that you really kind of really needed to focus on, but you ignored everything else. Well, good news is this is available on the replay. So by the time we're done here, you can just go back and focus on those individual areas. Remember, we have seen people come to this same stream, the same, same, same pre-recorded bit, time to time again. And every single time they pick up one more nugget, one more piece of information, one more thing in order to grow that channel. So that's why we do it. That's why we do the same thing again and again and again to help you guys grow. Now you have a choice. You can sit there going, oh, this doesn't work for me. I've tried everything. And ultimately when we go look at your channel, well, you clearly haven't. Or you can have a different mindset. You can say, okay, let me open up my channel now, he's talking about doing research. Well, did I do research on these videos? How much research did I do? Do I know who my competitors are? Do I know what they're talking about? Am I jumping on the latest trends? Can I make the latest trends work for me? That's how you grow your channel, by putting in thought, time, and effort into doing the steps the right way. So there are no shortcuts. I know everybody wants a shortcut. Everybody wants to switch on their computers, go next, 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 finish like a good old wizard, and then amazingly you get a million subscribers. It simply doesn't work that way. You have to put in the effort. So, the way that this works, okay, Squad Trooper Gaming says, thanks for the tips, helped me. Boom, that's what I'm talking about. That is how you grow your channel. Magdalena Helen, how are you doing? The Doberman guy still here. Thank you for hanging out. I saw Leela was here, but she had to go. Um, uh, Daniel's still holding down the fort, which is awesome. So now we're going to go into the Q&A bit. Now, this is the bit where you guys get to ask me questions. I get to answer them. It's going to be fun. Remember, go at vidIQ so I can actually see your question as it, as it kind of pops up on my screen. And then we can really dive into certain elements. So that is good. Complex Constructs that says the tips do indeed work. Boom. There we go. You heard it. <laughs> right. At JBB, it got, me, it got me monetized in about a year. You guys are amazing. Proof's right there, people. Jamie, I promise you didn't sit back and going, this doesn't work and was hoping for the best. She actually did the work and the work pays off. And that is how you rock and roll. Chrono Networks, thanks for the tips. Thank you for hanging out here. All right, let's pick up a question. Remember, at vidIQ, so I can actually see it. But I did see this question from John and Zoe's family vlog. I have a question. My wife uh, started a family vlog channel with us and our three children in Greece. We are two months in. Congratulations. But we are doing it in uh, but we are doing it in English. How can I get our content out there? Simple. Who are you trying to target? Is it other families? Is it other um, other YouTubers? Is it people with kids? Are you doing travel stuff? Are you doing family games? Who's your audience? Well, if you know who your audience is, you know where they're hanging out. Are they perhaps on Facebook groups? Because if you're looking for other families, that's probably where they are. If you're looking to target kids, well, they may be on TikTok. So that's where your audience is. Find out where your audience is hanging out and go and be part of those communities. Add value. Don't just spam your links in there. 
add value to conversations that are happening. And if you can add value, people naturally say, well, who is this person? And they click on your name and they go and check out your channel. Share your stuff around wherever you can, but share your knowledge, add those values. That's important. Greece is awesome. Maybe you can um, do stuff, show people things in Greece that they're not able to do, especially now since none of us can travel. There's an idea, right? Okay, um, right. D um, Darren's general info. See, like Darren's another one of those people person that keeps coming back and pumps back and always got questions, always is learning, and that's how you grow a good channel. Many, video, um, many videos does it take to rank high on Google search? So it's not about the number of videos, but it's about the title that you use. It's about the quality of your video. Remember, YouTube is a search engine, the number two search engine in the world. Google, the number one search engine in the world. What happens? People put in a search question on Google. If your video can marry up with that answer, odds are pretty good that you're going to start getting picked up. So it's not the number of videos. It's the quality of your videos. Are you using timestamps in your videos? Use those timestamps. Use those chapter marks so that you can try and be married up with those, with those questions. Okay. Let's refresh, and I'm going to see if I can get some more questions here. Ba, 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 da, da. All right, Backyard Q says, I've got my first 150 views um, award um, after only three weeks. Boom. All right, there we go. See, putting in the effort, putting in the time, and it takes time. That's how you win. Well done, Backyard Q. Right, Cruel. Okay, no, not Backyard. That's the channel name. Right. What is the best way to get discovered when nobody is watching? Again, same thing. Who is your audience? Every single person on this chat and every single person on YouTube, you need to know who your ideal audience member is. It, okay, let, it's called the avatar. Let's put it this way. Um, I've got a technology channel. My technology channel, I know whenever I make a video, I'm making it from one person. My one person happens to be 34 to 45 years old. It's male. He has a wife and kids that he likes technology stuff, but doesn't want to spend 30 minutes going through a video. He only wants five, six minute videos. He wants to have all the information, but he doesn't want to go, um, he want to, doesn't want step by, uh, he wants step by step instructions, and he wants to understand what he's doing, not simply follow like sheep, okay? That's the person I'm making the video for. Every video I make for this person. In fact, I got a picture of him up on the wall. His name's Alex, and every single video that I do, I say, will Alex watch? That's my only question, because when you make a video for one person, you can be super targeted. When I try to make technology videos for everyone, well, you can never win that game. So all those people trying to get more views and more subscribers here, you need to know who your Alex is. Who is the person that you're making the video for? Where does Alex hang out? Where does your guy or girl hang out? Are they on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram? Where are they? And therefore, you know what kind of issues they're having, what kind of pain points they're having. Can you help them? And when you can do that, well, that's how you grow your channel. All right. Uh, John and Zoe's family's book. Thank you. No problem. Thank you for asking questions. Complex Construct says, should I use things like Facebook and Twitter to grow my channel? Absolutely. Share things wherever you're adding value. I would be very cautious of simply spamming those places. But if somebody's on Twitter is having a conversation about something that you did a video about, Go and add value. Say, hey, I did this, and this is what happened when I did this. Don't drop a link. Naturally, what people do, they're going to look at your Twitter profile. You've got a link to your YouTube channel. They're going to click on that. Okay? Adding value. Critical, critical, critical. Okay. Um, let me refresh. Da, 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 da. Uh -huh. Okay. Right. Excellent dude says, once monetized, basically part of the YPP program, is YouTube more likely to promote you? Nope. That's all nonsense. YouTube, discovery, search and discovery algorithm, and the advertising algorithms are two separate beasts, two separate systems. YouTube doesn't say, oh, this person is part of our monetized program. I'm going to make more money. I'm going to promote this more. It doesn't work that way. Our channel on vidIQ, we've got, what, 750,000 um, subscribers. We haven't got a single ads running on our channel. Our channel's not monetized. We're even plenty discovered because it's not about the same system. It's two different systems. Don't worry if you're not in the YPP program and therefore you'll never grow because YouTube doesn't love you because you're not making money for it. And especially now with the new YouTube terms of service that have changed, well, everything has changed again. So don't, YouTube's search and discovery is a different algorithm to the advertising algorithm. Okay. Um, all right, let me refresh this and get some more questions in. Bum, bum, bum. 
Um, spiky, spiky Mikey, <laughs> cool name. I upload daily one minute videos. Does that actually help me grow? So unless you're doing a shorts channel, now Daniel dropped a link to the shorts videos that we have on our vidIQ channel. We have so much information about shorts. It's still brand new and we've yet collected a lot of information, a lot of data. We have lots of discussions around it. Go and check that out. But if you're uploading regular one minute videos onto your main channels, uh, odds are that it's too short for YouTube to actually get a sus of what's going on with this video. Is it good? Is it bad? Um, what's the retention like? It's just such a short time span. Probably four or five minutes kind of timestamp should be your minimum. Um, you should be aiming to do, to do those kind of length of videos. If you're only doing one minute videos, you are perfect for a shorts channel. So go and definitely investigate that as an option. Um, let's go and refresh a more. Uh, Oh, why is the refreshing not working? Um, all right, uh, fat dad fishing. Say that seven times quickly. All right, does it hurt or help your channel to push lower watch time viewers from Facebook? Or does YouTube push or it likes pushing people to the platform? So YouTube doesn't like you taking people off the platform, all right? Very much like Facebook doesn't like you taking people off the platform. So it's a bit of a, hmm, what do you, what, what do? You do? Um, I kind of say, still say I have a different audience on Facebook than I do on my YouTube channel, okay? So maybe what I will do is cut up my YouTube video into a shorter format and do a teaser video on Facebook with a link to my main video on, on, um, on, on YouTube. I do the same for LinkedIn, for example. Some of the times I'll just share the entire video. YouTube doesn't see it as a negative. In fact, I take all my videos and I actually embed them into my blog. So it's an ex called external. If YouTube didn't like it, it wouldn't have an embed feature allowing you to take your videos elsewhere. The more eyeballs you're getting on your videos, the, be the better it is. So yeah, I don't see a problem with that. Baggy TV CFC, right. Has there been a channel in the way, what are the, has there been a change, oh, sorry, change in the way YouTube recommends videos? I've noticed a drop in views. It's not, no, not really. Um, YouTube is constantly changing, so yes and no, but there hasn't been anything dramatic that is good, that we can kind of say, oh, big algorithm change or some, something that major. A change in a view happens seasonally, it's time of year. Um, lots of people, are, lots of kids are now writing exams in the US, as an example. So they're less likely to be on YouTube. We are all in this lockdown position. Maybe some people have gone back to work. So again, change in views as opposed to a couple of months ago. So it's just all of those factors that, that come in together. Nothing significant at the moment that we are aware of. Okay, let me refresh. Um, refresh, refresh. Okay, uh, fat bad, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, all right, Spiky Mikey, how do you get on top of the algorithm? Huh? The golden question. The answer is uh, watch this training from the beginning. The, the only way to get on top of the algorithm is to do what YouTube wants you to do. And we covered all that in the last hour or so. So go and check that out. Wildly cool, does, use, um, does using different strategy on videos get more views and subscribers? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by that, but yes, there are different strategies that different creators use. Some people do, um, you know, more natural, more less scripted, more off the cuff kind of stuff. And because they're a personality, they engage with an audience more. Some people do very high end productions. So that's a different kind of strategy. Um, as far as the search versus browse. Yes, if you're catering, if you're a small channel, I would suggest going after search traffic. In other words, those people that are looking for specific solution. How do I change a car tire? How do I fix a broken toilet? How do I, uh, which is the best phone to get with the best camera? Things like that. Go and again, I covered all this in the, in the training. Go to the beginning, look at the alphabet walkthrough, and then that's how you get those eyeballs, especially if you're a smaller channel. So that's a search strategy. You have a browse strategy as you're getting bigger, you might, you might want to be, you want to be recommended in the people's home page. So, you know, when you open up YouTube, it's got all those videos that YouTube thinks you would want to see. That's where you want to be. And that becomes a very different strategy. So, but again, all this is covered in the video or in the video part where we try and go and check all that out. Okay. Um, right. Kapo Kutak Poli. Ah, we see you fanatically spelled it out. S smart. Okay. Um, I make videos in English and Hindi. Um, yes, Hindi is an Indian language. Yes, I'm aware. 
Should I continue making for both or focus on one language? Um, by the way, I think you're wonderful for your help. All right, no problem. So I don't like having multiple languages on one channel, simply because if I'm listening to you in English and the next video is in Hindi, I'm not going to understand what's going on. It's very difficult for me to come back because I just assume that now it's going to be Hindi. And, and the other way around, if you're making in Hindi and, and, and then you throw in an English language, people are saying, well, why, why do I want to watch this in a different language? So I, I always recommend when it's, if you, if you absolutely want to have multiple languages, I suggest multiple channels. The reason I say you got to be committed because it's double the work. You have to do double the traffic, double the, uh, everything is just compounded so much more. Personally, I think focus on one language that's giving you views, giving you subscribers, content that's connecting, focus on that. And as that's kind of growing, then decide that you want to have a second language, oh, excuse me, a second language as a, as a strategy. That might be, that, that might be an idea. All right, and thank you for spelling out your name phonetically, because I can't say names. Um, right, Spikey Mikey, thanks very much. No problem. That's why we're here. That's what we have for you. Palmer Clarkson. Clarkson? Clarkson. Okay. Oh, got a super chat. News India and Z, Z and Z and K. Thank you for the super chat. We're going to do something awesome with everybody's super chats. Just watch the space. Um, okay. Let's see here. Uh, where's Clarkson got? Um, right. If your audience prefers five to six minute videos and YouTube algorithm prefers eight to 10, which one should you do? Well, YouTube prefers retention. In other words, YouTube can, you can make a 30 minute video. But if people are only watching for one minute, YouTube is not going to give you preferential treatment because you've made a 30-minute video. YouTube wants to make sure that it has quality videos. So what you got to do is you got to make sure... Oh, it's getting hot in here. What you got to do is you got to make sure that your videos are connecting with your audience. Rather make a seven-minute video or five-minute video that's getting more than 50% retention. In other words, the majority of your audience that are watching that video are sticking around. They love your content so much. That's the signal YouTube wants to see. Amazing people who are loving your content. They're sharing it. They're thumbs upping it. They're leaving you comments. They're rewinding and fast forwards. Those are the signal YouTube is looking for. When you hit those signals, then YouTube promotes your videos more. If your audience loves it, well, let me go try it with a different audience. Now, YouTube doesn't prefer eight to 10 minute video. Well, the only reason eight to 10 became a thing is because it allowed creators to put mid-roll ads in the, in the middle of your videos. So does it get you more views? No, well, not especially if you're losing your audience in the first two minutes. I would rather you, you make five minute videos and get 50% than make a six minute video and then still get 50% retention. Make an eight minute video and you get 20% retention, great, go back down to six minutes because six minutes is what your people are willing to tolerate on your channel. I know on my channel, I do five, six minute videos all the time. When I do a 10, 20, a 10, 15 minute videos, terrible performance. Whoops, I scale it straight back down to my five or six minutes. Remember I was talking about Alex, my guy who watches my video, his attention span is only five or six minutes. So I make my videos, five or six minutes and it works. Well, you can see my channel numbers, it's doing a pretty much okay. <laughs> All right, um, right, Les, uh, okay, L-A-Z-1-E-N, Lazian? Okay, right. Does posting videos to Reddit hurt the video's overall performance? It doesn't hurt the overall performance when you post it to anything external, Reddit, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, Facebook, wherever it, wherever it may be. Um, what you want to make sure is that it's the right audience coming over. Here's what I mean. You could say, post a video to a Reddit subreddit that, and get people all stupidly excited because they think that a big YouTuber is in your videos. But when they click on that video, they immediately see that it's not what they thought and they leave. Well, what does that do? It tells people, tells YouTube, most of your audience doesn't care about this video. Therefore, YouTube doesn't promote it. Okay, so be careful when you're posting it. Post it where it adds value. And if it adds value, then people will stick around with it. Absolutely. All right. Let me refresh. Uh, refresh. Da, 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 da. Um, okay. All right. Same questions are copying and pasting, copying and pasting, which is always fun. Um, right. Wildly cool. How do you grow a Let's Play channel as a small, as a small channel? Uh, again, you've got to know your audience. What kind of content are they looking for? What makes you unique 
why would I come to your channel versus hundreds and thousands of other channels out there? That's the most important for every single type of channel out there. For specifically for gaming, go check out the vidIQ channel. We have lots of videos specifically on how to grow a gaming channel as a small creator. Go, there's lots of information there. It's hours worth of content. Go and learn that stuff that's over there. It's about being unique. It's about bringing a different perspective, bringing your character, bringing you into the game. Um, I, you got It's just too difficult to simply do a let's play like everybody else is doing. Because if I have a choice, I can watch say Preston play video, or I am I can watch your your channel. Well, I don't know you, but I know Preston, so I'm going to go back and watch Preston. Why did Preston become so successful? Because he brought his personality in there. Same thing that you need to do. Okay. Um, bum, bum, ba, da, 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 da. Right. Um, Palmer Klassen says, thank you so much. Okay. Super useful. Absolutely. That's why we do these things. Uh, Spiky Mikey, do, why does YouTube say I'm on 100 views and then it goes down to 30? Well, YouTube, remember, YouTube counts those views and then it authenticates and checks those views. So sometimes it will overcount and sometimes a lot of those views might come from you by you refreshing your videos or the same people watching again and again or there are bots, or there are spam accounts. All of those factors come into account, and then it just does a readjustment. It even says it's an estimate, and then after a while, it will get you the right figure. Remember, if you look at YouTube Studio on your computer and look at YouTube Studio on your app, there are different numbers, because again, it's where the information and how fast it's coming in and at which point you're retrieving that information. So yeah, that's, that's why it does that. Whew, okay, oh, hold on. I need coffee. Um, right, now's a good time to hit the thumbs up on the stream if you want to whilst I have a sip of coffee. Or thumbs down, that's also cool too. Okay, All right, before my voice dies completely. Right, um, all right, guys, I, I hear you, but, but stop copying and pasting your questions a million times. It doesn't really help. Um, right, da 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 um, Lazy, uh, is that that, hung, that one? Okay, never mind. Right, when does YouTube start pushing your content harder to suggest it? I have 6,000 subs and it's, it's not lazy. <laughs> okay, good one. All right, so when does it start pushing your content? When it gets the signals. So you could have one subscriber, but you can have a really good video that's getting 90% retention. People are watching it all the time and rewinding and fast forwarding and leaving comments and giving it a thumbs up and sharing it. That's good signals. That's what YouTube is looking for. It's not about the number of subscribers you have on your channel. It's each and every single video. It looks by itself. You've got to hit those marks, which is why I say don't, don't post lots of garbage every single day because quality over quantity. No, rather post less, but have each one of those videos a masterpiece, and that's when YouTube starts to suggest the video. Remember, YouTube is looking at the data. So if you've got a really good video, YouTube understands who's watching that video, what kind of person is watching it. It's going to go and try find audiences that are like the people are watching, which is why sub for sub sucks. It doesn't work. It destroys your channel because you've got all this bad data on your channel right now. And then YouTube says, well, if your own people aren't watching it, I'm not going to promote it. But like on your channel, 6,000 subscribers, you've got people watching your videos. If you start getting 50% retention, that's what you're aiming for. If you're starting getting that again and again and again, YouTube starts to see those signals and then starts to spread that video and start to suggesting it around. Okay. Hoo, 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 hoo. Um, right, meditation garden. So we're an hour in and you're answering one question and not 10, not enough hours in a day. I've got to go. Thank you for being awesome. What an epic human. Appreciate that. Um, okay. Wow. Even when you give stuff for free, people still complain. It's just like, just uh, and. Believable. Hardcore vibes with DJ um, ben, uh, Benny Swift. I'm a DJ and I upload live DJ mix streams for alerts. Should I should I use an alert for hardstyle or hardstyle mix? Uh, lost me. What does alerts mean? Sorry, I'm not. I for alerts. Okay, let me read it again. I'm a, for alerts. Should I use an alert for hardstyle or hardstyle mix? Sorry, no, don't understand what that means. If you can explain that, I can maybe try help you. All right. Okay, um, let's go refresh some more. Um, okay, Doo -doo 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 -doo. okay, Lazian says, okay, thanks, Matt, no problem. And now I know how to say your name. Ha, <laughs> right. Um, so, um, Sergeant, 
Sergeant, Surgeon, Surgeon Timothy, do you have any tips for me? I have 578 subscribers. I have no tips for you because I don't know what that means. If you've got a question, I can help you with a question. How are you trying to, if you're asking how you can grow your channel, which is kind of assuming what, you, what you're trying to do, um, go watch this training again. I saw that you've been hanging out here for a little bit as well. Go watch this training. Go and watch the tips that I'm telling you. How to do your research, how to do your discovery, how to do your, your, uh, your delivery. Go hang out in the channel audit and make those videos. That's how you grow your channel. 578 subscribers, awesome. Keep going. You're crushing it. It, it, it doesn't happen overnight. I really wish... Like we watch stuff on social media where a new channel pops up and get a million subscribers and then people think that's the norm. It is not the norm. It takes years and years and years of hard work, but it's wor but absolutely worth it. All right, that was my dog telling me it's almost finish time. All right, let's do some more. Um, okay. Um, Pablo Lozion says, I paid for Pro on November 27. I cannot, uh, it's asking me to ask, uh, uh, dude, I have no idea. Contact support at vidiq.com. And I'm sure they'll be able to help you out here. If we don't do support on the stream, that's not what it's about. Uh, oh, trend alerts, Hardcore Vab says. Do both. Okay, um, that's a great question. On the trend alerts, do both. If you're trying to understand what people are looking for, absolutely, cover your entire gamut. I would cover music and DJ and Ibiza and like all of those things that are big, big keywords. And then I would focus on the very specific and then really understand like, Top music hits, for example, like very specific versus just music in general. So cover a whole bunch of them. So you get a lot of these alerts and then you start seeing some trends. And when you start seeing those trends, that's when you jump in on it. Okay, thank you for clarifying. I wasn't sure what you were asking. <laughs> All right, um, let's do some more questions before our time runs out here. Um, right, George Polly says, I understand this training is weekly. Is the same content or unique every week? The A to Z of how to grow your channel is exactly the same every week, just because it works and YouTube has, doesn't change week to week. The Q and A, obviously that becomes different, different afterwards. Um, yeah, but no more to add to that. Um, right, Spikey Mikey, how much do tags help? Tags are not as important as they used to be. So you should be focusing on your thumbnails and your titles. I focus 70% of my effort on thumbnails and titles, 20% of my effort on description, and 10% on tags. Tags are really good for things like advertising and things like misspelling and classifications and things of that nature. But the real data YouTube gets from your thumbnail, it gets from your title, gets from your um, description, and it even gets when it automatically captions your videos. That's where it's really focusing. They're just not as important as they used to be. Still have them in there. But don't, um, but don't focus so much attention on getting the perfect tags and then ignoring everything else. Great thumbnail and title always, always is number one. Okay. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da -da. Let's do some more. Uh, okay, let's do some more. And Cart Galaxy, question. When doing a channel audit, how can you tell that the channel is going to make it? Oh, when we do a channel audit, we know that a channel is going to make it when they are putting in the effort, where they are listening and not being egotistical and they know everything and they just are the best at the world. Okay, When they're open to learning, they're open to change, they're opening to try new stuff. That's when we know that a channel is going to make it because YouTube is all about evolving learning, making decisions, minor changes, and that's when magic essentially happens. So yeah, that's absolutely, we see this time and time again. Um, okay, oh, we got a super chat. Um, Sensei C Seth, I know it's a C, Seth, Seth. My, um, my growth on my channel went from gaining 2,000 per week and tons of views to halting about two weeks ago. Any advice? Without seeing your channel, it's a little bit difficult to understand what's going on. Did you change anything? Do you, are you doing something different? Are you catering to a different crowd? Um, did, did anybody flag any of your videos with copyright strikes? Did um, you know of your channel being reported? All of those kind of factors come into account. Unfortunately, we don't do channel audits today, so really difficult to understand what's going on. I would look at your analytics, look at your source data. Where were the views coming from before? Was it browse, suggested, external, Google? Try and understand that. And then it will give you some ideas of what's going on. 
Also in your analytics, do a comparison. How's your channel doing this month versus last month? But also go over 90 days. How is it doing for the past 90 days versus the previous 90 days? You might find that you might have hit a spike and then it kind of corrected itself, but it didn't drop to zero. It might have just corrected back to what it used to be before. It happened exactly on my channel. It was growing, 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 and then it just level I thought it was like dying but it turns out it just was correcting and it just had a new a new ground so um, definitely sensei look for the channel trends over a period of time don't just look week by week look over 60 days 90 days 180 days and try understand your source data where are people coming from and why are they not coming from there anymore um, again, one more thing, you might have found that maybe someone embedded your video in like a Reddit stream and it did really, really well and it was voted up and was giving you all those lovely views. And now that stream, that, that thread is now gone. So it's back, to, it's back to normal again. Got to investigate that source data. Hopefully that was helpful. Okie dokie. Right. Um, Lazy in. Sorry if I'm starting to be annoying. <laughs> no, no. That, that's the point of the streams is to ask those kind of questions. One of my videos popped off recently, got around 200,000 impressions per day and 30,000 views per day. Then it suddenly died, it died to 70,000 impressions and 15,000 views. Yep, nature of the beast. So something was hot, yeah, it picked it up. YouTube tried it on various groups. Certain groups responded. It tried it again on different groups and those groups didn't respond. Just one of those things. Learn from it, see what the topic was, can you make an updated video on that and then give it an, and then give it another go? There's no way for any of us to decipher the mystic way that YouTube works. All we can do is look at the data and make data-driven decision. Understand what was going on, learn from it, improve it on our next one. Just one of those things. You could do absolutely everything right. Perfect thumbnail, perfect title, perfect description, great video. Everybody loves it and then YouTube doesn't. Just one of those one of those things. Okay. Um, right. Mohammed Ibrahim says, is vidIQ more useful for English content YouTube channels than other languages? For example, Arabic content. Um, yeah. So we, um, you can use it on, on other languages. Um, obviously it's all written in English, but it, you, we do pull data from other non-English sources. So you can absolutely use it. Try the free version. Go pull up your data from your channel, pull up data from your competitor's channel and see if you're getting those um, in Arabic, see if you're getting that information, see when you're doing your search, if it's relevant to you and then make your decision against that. Um, all right. Um, a o and O, does your profile picture affect your channel? It doesn't really affect your channel, but... I know that I like to connect with people. Most people like to connect with people. None of us woke up this morning saying, wow, I wonder what my toothpaste company is up to. What we do do is when we see somebody's face, we go, oh, I recognize that person. Uh, let me go watch their video. Or I know that person. You kind of get to know the person. So I always like a personal picture as opposed to a logo. Obviously, if you're a brand, you got to have your logo. Okay. All right, a couple of more questions because I'm uh, dying here. Um, let's do, um, oh, why is it not refreshing? Come on, come on, you can do this. Come on. Um, uh, right, wildly cool. Does clip, clickbait help on videos? No, if clickbait actually hurts your videos. If you put a video up, a title saying, the day I hung out with Casey Neistat, and then your video has got nothing to do with that, what happens? Think about this. What happens? A viewer sees it, go, oh, I love Casey. Let's go watch this video. Click on play. They start watching your videos for a couple of seconds, realize Casey's never going to be in this video, and they leave. What does that do to your retention? Drops it down to 1%. What's YouTube going to do when it sees a video with 1% retention that nobody likes to watch? It's not going to promote it. So clickbait absolutely hurts your channel. Now, saying that, there's nothing wrong with a bit of mystique, a bit of mysterious. Um, I always like to use this example. Uh, five reasons you should buy this phone and one reason why you should never. Okay, something like that. That's perfectly fine. That's going to, because you're still about this topic. So I'm still on topic. I'm just adding a reason for somebody to click. That's perfect. You can do that. Okay. All right. Uh, no more questions? I guess we're done. 
Okay, so I guess we're done for this week. I'll be on again next week doing the same training again. It's pre-recorded, so it'll be the exact same stuff. My suggestion is go and watch it again. Go pick out one topic and then focus your next week on that one thing, like the autocomplete, like the channel order tool, like the trend alert, like the competitors. Do one thing, baby steps, and next week do another step, and next week do another step. We come back again and again and again, week in and week out, and we do the Q&A, but the important thing is the training. Focus on that training because that is how you grow on YouTube. So thank you for hanging out here. Um, thank you to all our mods for really being cool and, of course, um, helping people. Daniel's here, um, the Doberman guy's here, Leela was here, Magdalena Helen. Hopefully, I'm not leaving anybody out. My voice is about to go completely, with, um, but again, we'll be here next week. So if I didn't answer your question, I apologize. We'll try, try, again, <laughs> try again next week. Um, smash the thumbs up button on your way out if you don't mind doing that. That'll be super helpful. If you didn't enjoy the stream, smash the thumbs down button. That's also fine. And um, at the end of the day, focus on your audience. Make quality videos. Don't worry about quantities. Quality, quality, quality. That is what it's about. It's about giving value to your audience. And that's why they come back again and again and again. When people comment on your videos, comment back. Get into a conversation. You'll start seeing the same people coming back again and again and again. That's awesome. That's how you bring you you build up your community. Appreciate you guys hanging out here. Thank you to our amazing mods. Without you guys, we could never do this. Remember, if you want VidIQ for 30 days, it's in the description and it's up here in the chat somewhere. There's a link to that. Join us on Discord. Join us on Facebook. Tomorrow's podcast, guys, those that are here, tomorrow's podcast, someone went from zero subscribers to $100,000 in 2020. This, the entire thing started in 2020, in this insane year, and they got $100,000 out of YouTube. I'm going to tell you how. Tube Talk. So go to vidiq.com slash Tube Talk or find Tube Talk in your favorite podcast application, Apple, Spotify, and Google, and everything else. And then come and listen tomorrow. Great episode. You'll get so much, so much value. Everybody can do this. I promise you it's doable, but you got to put in the work. That's what it boils down to. So um, quality, quality is absolutely right. Cruel, consistent. Absolutely. Sim the Explorer says goodbye. Thank you for hanging out here. John and Zoe family vlogs. Do those videos. Focus on where your audience is. You've got this. Um, Cat Slade, VidIQ Boost is great. Thank you, Cat. We appreciate you saying that. Um, Hamza, uh, uh, Hamzan. Night Flash. Oh, my pronunciation is getting a little bit better. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Fresh Sun, Florida. Wow. Okay. Awesome. Uh, Spiky Mikey, thank you for asking a gazillion questions. Sorry we couldn't get to each and every single one of them. Palmer Carson and um, Clarkson. Told you, just names and me, man. Just don't go together. Uh, see you next time. Absolutely. Um, with, with Angel Tuba. Goodbye. Appreciate you being here. Thank you. Nap and sleep therapy. Oh, fruitful information. I like it. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, Uganda. Hey, what's up? How are you doing? That's um, Kel's Media UG. Um, this is real. Um, so, no, I'm staying. So, Hamagatle. Hopefully, I remember that right. Sorry. It's been a while, man. <laughs> All right. Thank you for being here. Appreciate you. Um, All right. And everybody else, Lilac Channel, very best. I appreciate you guys doing here. Spikey Mikey, thanks. Can I get a shout out? Football Live, yes, hello. Lisa Fitness, thank you for being here. Um, are you could, you was, uh, yeah, I'm not even going to try. No reply. Sorry, missed your question. Let's do it next week. I will be here. Mimi Drive, well, when you do another channel review, those happens every week on a Tuesday. So we um, basically, that, that, that is when. And um, I think we're done. All right. Her. SNK, SNK crew. Man, I missed it. Ugh. We missed you. But again, this will be available on the replay. Or we'll see you next week on Wednesday. Woo All right, guys. I'm going to press the button. I'm going to get some more coffee. And you guys enjoy the rest of your video making day, as Rob Wilson likes to say. Cheers, guys. Ciao.